Namaste yogis, welcome to my channel. My name is Cassandra and today we're doing a yin yoga practice specifically for your quads and your hip flexors. So really trying to open up the front of the thighs. You'll need lots of props, have a blanket, two blocks or a bolster, as well as a strap. I know for myself, I won't need the strap, so you might not need it at home, but those of you who have a lot of limited range of motion in the quads and hip flexors might want to have it just in case. Um, there are four asanas that we'll be doing. There aren't that many in yoga poses that target specifically the quads, but there are about four, so we're gonna do all of those in today's practice. I'm gonna start by using the blanket and sitting on top of it. We'll just do a little grounded meditation. And before we begin, I should thank the people at OM at Cashew Hill, this beautiful retreat center that I'm in here in Puerto Viejo, Costa Rica. Such an amazing space for me to be able to film my classes. So thank you to the wonderful staff there. And now just get comfortable, sit in any way that works for you. And let's start with a little grounding meditation. Let your hands rest on your knees and close your eyes. Taking some cleansing breaths in and out through the nose. Letting go of the day you've had or anything else that might be on your mind right now. Anything that may be distracting you from this present moment and from your practice. See if you can bring your awareness to the low body, to the quads the hip flexors, even the low back. Notice if there's any tension, discomfort, or tightness there. We'll be getting deep into the psoas muscle and the quadriceps. But the psoas is said to be the muscle of the soul. So what is it that you want to release from this space? And let's bring our hands together at the front of the heart, opening with the chant of Om one time, inhaling to chant, breathe in. Om. And gently opening up the eyes. Let's start lying down on our belly. So this is a pose where you might want or you might need to use a strap. I know I won't be needing any props. So lowering down, feet are about hip width distance apart and you can cross your left forearm out in front of you. We're gonna bend into the right knee, catch a hold of your right foot and then you're pulling your heel in towards the glute. So first thing that tends to want to happen is the right knee wants to open up to the side Try to keep it hip width distance apart so it's really the front of your thigh that's facing down to the mat. If you have a hard time reaching back for your foot, this is when you'll want to loop a strap around your ankle and work from there. Otherwise, if you can get it pretty close in towards you, you can choose to just let your forehead rest down on the ground and lengthen your tailbone towards your knees. So the more you're able to push and press your tailbone down, the deeper you'll be able to start feeling this into the quads. So if this is your first time doing a yin yoga class with me, you should know that in yin yoga, we hold passive poses for a few minutes on each side. So we're not meant to use any kind of muscular effort. We're trying to relax, find our edge. And very important, we also want to be still once we are in the pose. So we'll be in this pose for about two and a half minutes or so. 
Simply stay with your breath. And relax anything that doesn't need to be working right now. And carefully release your right foot back down to the mat, nice and slow. And we'll go and make our way to the other side so you can cross your right forearm on the mat. Bend into your left knee. Remember, we're not widening our knees. Keep it hip width distance apart. Reach back with your left hand and try to pull that heel in towards the glutes. Reach your tailbone towards the back of your mat. Try to flatten the lower back a little bit or ground the pubic bone into the floor to get deeper into the quads and into the hip flexors. A few minutes on this side. Release the hold of your left foot nice and slow. Slide your hands underneath your chest and press back up, tabletop pose. And we'll be making our way into lizard pose with a quad stretch. So for this one, I'm gonna use a blanket to pad my knee. From tabletop pose, you'll be stepping your right foot forward to the outer edge of your right hand and then putting a blanket or doubling up your mat underneath your left knee. And I really do recommend this, especially for the quad stretch, otherwise it might be a little harder to hold. You can choose to either keep your knee and your toes pointing straight forward ahead. My favorite way to come into lizard is to lift the right toes up and roll to the outer edge of that right foot. From here, you can stay as you are, you can come up onto some blocks, or you can lower onto your forearms. And now for the quad stretch, you're gonna reach your right hand to the back of the mat, 
bend into your left knee, which is why the blanket is so useful here. Catch a hold of the foot or use a strap to wrap around the foot and try to linger here. We're gonna try to stay here for about three minutes, maybe four minutes, we'll see how it goes. And I like to let the neck relax, the head be heavy. So your breath is super important, especially in an intense pose like this one. There's a lot of sensation going on. Know that you can take breaks at home if you need to. Just try not to fidget or distract yourself too much. Resolve to be still. Very slowly release the hold of your back foot. Careful not to let it slingshot down to the ground. This is an intense pose. Take your time to come out of it. And before we go and do this on the other side, it might feel good to just take a little easy child's pose. So keeping the knees, the legs together, reaching your arms back, forehead down, just a few breaths like this. And lifting back up, we'll prepare, making our way into the same pose, but over on the other side. So you might want to move your blanket so it can be underneath your right knee and step your left foot forward to the outer edge of your left hand. Being very mindful to find a 90 degree angle here, the knee directly over your foot. And you can either keep everything facing forward if that's what you did on the first side, or you can curl the toes towards the shin and rotate over onto your, the left side of your left foot. And then maybe come down onto some blocks or onto the forearms, finding your quad stretch. The left arm reaches to the back of your mat, bend into your right knee and catch a hold of your right foot.
So finding your edge. And your edge is probably not as far as you think it needs to be. I like to tell people on a scale of one to 10 intensity wise, if in one you feel nothing and 10 you feel pain, you're kind of just staying at a four or a five. Because we are holding this pose, your body will naturally open up and you'll be able to go deeper into the pose without having to force or push your way there. And release the hold of your right foot. Bring your hands back and lift your way back up. And one more time, we'll take that easy child's pose. And you can move your blanket off to the side. We won't be needing it. Let yourself rest a little here. And let's start to lift back up. So we'll be making our way to reclined hero pose. You might want to have your blocks here. I know I'm not gonna need it, but I can show you how to use them in case. So you can make your way closer to the top of the mat. So for reclined hero, the way I like to do it is to align the femurs. So you want your ankles to the outer edges of your hips. I'll turn just to show you real quick. So I'm not sitting back on my heels. I'm trying to align my knees with my hip bones and then my shins and my feet are to the outer edges of the thighs. And I wanna get myself in a way where all five toes and the soles or the tops of the feet are pressing down into the floor. Now, some people will be here. If it's hard to be close to the ground like this, you can always roll up a blanket or you can put a block underneath your hips so that you're up a little bit higher. If this feels uncomfortable for your knees, another thing that you can do is just put the blanket in between 
the shins directly underneath the knees as you rest back down. So for me, this is fine for my knees, so I don't really need my props. Sit bones down, and I like to move the shins out a little bit, just create some space. And as you lift up, scoop the tailbone under before setting your hips back down, and then you can make your way lower behind you either coming all the way down to the ground or lowering onto one or many blocks or bolsters as high up as you want them to be. So you can lift them up, one underneath the head and one underneath the upper back. This is a really beautiful way to do reclined hero. It helps you open up into the heart at the same time or you can lower down to your back. And actually I was planning to lower onto our onto my back, but this feels really, really good. And I'm getting a great stretch into the quads. So I'm just gonna stay here. Take as long as you need to get settled and comfortable into the pose. There should be no pinching or pain in the knees or the low back. Feel the steady flow of your breath in and out through your nose.
So in order to get out of this pose, we need to do it really slowly and mindfully. You can tuck your chin to your chest if you were reclined and use your forearms, maybe even the palms to push into the soles of the feet. Slowly lift your way back up and move your blocks off to the side. Make your way forward, tabletop pose and just stretch the legs back a few times. Extending the right leg and then the left. So our last pose before Shavasana will be cat pulling its tail. We'll need to lower all the way down to the floor for this one. I'm just gonna move my props off to the side. You might need a strap. So as you lower down, keep your left leg extended out to the floor and pull your right knee into your chest. From here, you're gonna cross your right knee over your body, over to the left, and your right arm can reach out. And then extend your right leg straight. So this is more a stretch into the IT band. You can always make this easier on yourself by keeping that knee bent. However, from here, we're gonna bend into our left knee and see if you can hold on to your left foot with your right hand and try to pull that knee back, getting your heel in close to the glute. And if possible, keep your right shoulder grounded on the floor. So you should start to feel this into your left quads as well into the IT band. And a strap can either go around the sole of your right foot or even to hold on to your left foot. This is one of my new favorite yin yoga poses. Relax your chest and shoulders. Just breathe deeply. You need to come out of this one step by step. First, release the hold of your left foot. You can bend your right knee and just roll onto your back. And before we do the other side, I'm just gonna take a little 
mini shavasana, just letting the legs be straight so I can see and feel the difference from one side to the next. Five breaths here. Now this time your right leg will stay extended out. Pull your left knee into your belly and cross your left thigh over and reach your left arm out to the side. And you can either choose to keep your left leg bent like this or you can straighten the leg and slide your right hand over the shin to kind of keep it in place. And then the quad stretch gets added into it. Bend your right knee. Try to catch a hold of your foot with your left hand and you're trying to pull your right knee back so it aligns with your hip while also pressing your left shoulder to the ground. It probably won't touch the floor. I know for me it's lifted up a little bit, but as much as possible, I'm trying to keep my collarbones facing straight up to the sky. Remember, you can use your strap. Once you've settled into the shape, try not to fidget, just breathe. And let's come out of this one as well. Let go of your right foot, let go of your left leg. Roll onto your back and make any little final movements or adjustments here. We're gonna come into Shavasana, our final resting pose. Taking up some space. Turning the palms face up. And just notice the effects of your practice on your hip flexors, your quads, even your knees, your low back. And simply let yourself be heavy. And 
Letting your breath be natural. Start to deepen your breath so that we can reawaken, energizing your body, wiggling fingers and toes. And you can stretch and reach your arms up overhead. Let's roll to one side. Come up and take a seat. Close your eyes once you're there. We'll finish our practice with a chant of Om one time. Hands come together at the front of the heart. Inhale to chant, breathe in. Om. Namaste. 
Thank you so much, yogis, for doing this practice with me. I hope you found it beneficial. If you don't already, please do subscribe to my channel. It's a great way to just support free yoga on the internet and it really helps to support my YouTube channel here. I put out new classes every single Thursday. I hope to practice with you again soon. Have a wonderful day. Namaste.